Hi there. We're going through the Gospel of Luke. We're on chapter 7. If you missed the last one, chapter 6, it was a, a really important one. Um, sermon on the Mount. Greatest sermon ever preached. And he names all his, all his apostles. So, yeah. Go back and see the last one if you missed it. But we'll get into chapter 7. We'll begin. The faith of a Roman officer... When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said, for he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with went with them. But just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I am not worthy of such an honor. I am not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this because I am under authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need to say go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Okay. He was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. <clears throat> and other translations and other books and other gospels say, when did this happen? And they trace it right to the very minute he said, your servant is healed, he was healed. Mm -hmm. Jesus raises a widow's son soon afterward Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain and a large crowd followed him a funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate the young man who had died was a widow's only son and a large crowd from the village was with her when the Lord saw her his heart overflowed with compassion don't you love the way it describes Jesus don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bearer stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God, saying, A mighty prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people today. And the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding countryside. And that'd do it, huh? Get up out of the coffin. <laughs> Jesus and John the Baptist. <clears throat> the disciples of John the Baptist told John about everything Jesus was doing, so John called for two of his disciples, and he sent them to the Lord to ask him, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? John's two disciples found Jesus and said to him, John the Baptist sent us to ask, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we be looking for someone else? At that very time, Jesus cured many people of their diseases, illnesses, and evil spirits, and he restored sight to many who were blind. Then he told John's disciples, Go back to John and tell him what you have seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. And he added, God blesses those who do not fall away because of me. After John's disciples left, Jesus began talking about, about him to the crowds. What kind of man did you go into the wilderness to see? Was he a weak reed swayed by every breath of wind? Or were you expecting to see a man dressed in expensive clothes? No, people who wear beautiful clothes and live in luxury are found in palaces. Were you looking for a prophet? Yes, and he is more than a prophet. John is the man to whom the scriptures refer when they say, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way before you. I tell you, of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John. Wow. That's a statement right there. Jesus said, Of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John, meaning John the Baptist. Yet even the least person in the kingdom of God is greater than he is. Okay. Wow. When they heard this, all the people, even the tax collectors, agreed that God's way was right, for they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and experts in religious laws rejected God's plan for them, for they had refused John's baptism. There you go. <clears throat> to what can I compare the people of this generation, Jesus asked. 
How can I describe them? They are like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends. We played wedding songs and you didn't dance. So we played funeral songs and you didn't weep. For John the Baptist didn't spend his time eating bread or drinking wine as you and you say he possessed he he's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks, and you say he's a glutton and a drunkard, and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by the lives of those who follow it. Hmm. Jesus anointed by a sinful woman. This is a good one. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him, so Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from that city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. And she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this woman were a prophet, he would know. What kind of woman is touching him? She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. <clears throat> A man loaned money to two people, 500 pieces of silver to one and 50 pieces to the other. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, canceling their debt. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answers, I suppose the one whom he canceled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash my, the dust from my feet. But she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the first time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you this, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has, sh so she has shown me much love, but a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Wow. They always hate it when he says that. The men at the table said among themselves, Who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Well, yeah. Women who followed Jesus. We're going to Luke 8 now. <clears throat> Soon afterward, Jesus began a tour of the nearby towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his twelve disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to, to support Jesus and his disciples. Hmm. So he had women with him all the time. Parable of the farmer scattering seed. One day Jesus told a story in the form of a parable to a large crowd that had gathered from, min from many towns to hear him. A farmer went out to plant his seed. As he scattered it across the field, some seed fell on a footpath where it was stepped on, and the birds ate it. Other seed fell among rocks. It began to grow, but the plant soon wilted and died for lack of moisture. Other seed fell among thorns. It grew up, up with it and choked out the tender plants. Still other seed fell on fertile soil. The seed grew and produced a crop that was a hundred times as much as he had planted. When he had said this, he called out, Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. <laughs> so they didn't understand even. He replied, You are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God, but I use parables to teach the others so the scriptures might be fulfilled. When they look, they won't really see. When they hear, they won't understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is God's word. The seed that fell on the footpath represented those who hear the message only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while and they fall away when they face temptation. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. A lot of that going on. And so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word, cling to it, and patiently produce a huge harvest. Well, 
I'm getting into his parables now. This is cool. No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or hides it under a bed. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. For all that is secret will eventually be brought out into the open, and everything that is concealed will be brought to the light and made known to all. So pay attention to how you hear. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. That's going on a lot today. The true family of Jesus. Then Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him. But they couldn't get to him because of the crowd. Someone told Jesus, your mother and brothers are standing outside and they want to see you. Jesus replied, My mother and my brothers are all those who hear God's word and obey it. Well, Jesus calms the storm. One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. <laughs> When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and raging waves. Suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm. Then he asked him, Where is your faith? <laughs> the disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. Yeah, but he asked him, Where is your faith? You know, the Lord is with you. Where's our faith now? The Lord is with us. Jesus heals a demon-possessed man. So they arrived in the region of the of the Gerasenes, across the lake from Galilee. As Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came to meet him. For a long time, he had been homeless and naked, living in the tombs outside of the town. There's a lot of stories about this. If you get a chance, um. Look for a song called Man of the Tombs. Um, it's a Michael Card song. One of the most beautiful songs you'll ever hear about this very parable. A side note. As soon as he saw Jesus, he shrieked and fell down in front of him. Then he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? <laughs> Please, I beg you, don't torture me. Okay. The demons knew who he was. They knew him. They recognized him. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. The evil spirit had often taken control of the man, even when he was placed under guard and put in chains and shackles. He simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness completely under the demon's power. Jesus demanded, What is your name? Legion, he replied. For he was filled with many demons. The demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. There is a place already where many of the demons and the fallen angels are locked away. <clears throat> there happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding on the hillside nearby, and the demons begged them to let them enter the pigs. So Jesus gave them permission. Okay, He had to give them permission. He's the boss. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the entire herd plunged down the steep hillside and into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw it, they fled to a nearby town and the surrounding countryside, spreading the news as they ran. People rushed out to see what had happened. A crowd soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw the man who had been freed from the demons. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, fully clothed and perfectly sane, and they were all afraid. Then those who had seen what happened told the others how to how the demon-possessed man had been healed, and all the people of the region of the Gerenses begged Jesus to go away and leave them alone, for a great wave of fear swept over them. So Jesus returned to the boat and left, well, crossing back to the other side of the lake. The man who had been freed from the demons begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him home, saying, No, go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So he went so he went all through the town proclaiming the great things Jesus had done for him. Yeah, that's part of that song by Michael Carr, too. The whole thing. It's wonderful. Jesus healed his heels in response to faith. On the other side of the lake, crowds welcomed Jesus because they had been waiting for him. 
Then a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about twelve years old, was dying. And Jesus went with him. He was surrounded by the crowds. A woman in the crowd had suffered for twelve years with constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out of me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees. <clears throat> this story always gets me, because it's just the faith is amazing. You know, when the, re- when the woman realized she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him, and she had been immediately healed. And this right here, daughter. This is the only person in the whole Bible that Jesus refers to as daughter. You know, there's nothing special about it, but it's just interesting that it's the only place in the Bible where he calls her daughter. Speaking is God. You're my child. He said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. That's a powerful story right there. While he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue, he told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith and she will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, James, and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he said, stop that weeping. She isn't dead, she's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because they all knew she had died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, My child, get up. And at that moment her life returned and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed, but Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone what had happened. There you go. But they did, didn't they? So that was... That was chapter 7 and 8. That was a great study. Good stuff. Good stuff. We'll continue with chapter 9 tomorrow. That was good stuff. He's starting his parables. But you got to be careful. That he tells stories, but interspersed in that are real events. Okay. Okay. I mean, he really did, you know, heal the person. He really did drive the demons from the man of the tombs. You know, and if you want to listen to an incredible song, it makes me cry every time I hear it. Michael Card, Man of the Tombs. Look that up on YouTube. It's a beautiful, beautiful song. Written a long time ago, but I mean, the words are just, I mean, once you've read this and you listen to that, it's just, it's amazing. But until next time, keep reading, keep praying. Ask the Holy Spirit for help. He'll always, help, always be there. See you next time. <laughs>